Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum subsequence score. The good news with this problem is coding it up is actually not as difficult as you would expect. Believe it or not, this is not a dynamic programming problem and I'll tell you exactly why. But the bad news is when you see the solution, you're kind of not gonna believe that it works, but I'm going to try to explain to you exactly why it does work. Now I'm not gonna show you a math proof or anything, but I'll definitely give you the intuition. So we're given two arrays that are of the same size. And we're also given a positive integer k. Basically, we want to pick k elements from each of the arrays. So suppose these are our two arrays, and let's say k in this case is 3. So let's say we pick three elements from the first array like this, 1, 2, 3. We can skip some elements. They don't have to be contiguous. But when we pick these three elements from the first array, we have to pick the same elements at the exact same index from the second array as well. So that's sort of the restriction. Now, the way they phrase this problem is they call this a subsequence, which, yeah, it kind of is a subsequence from the array but when we take these individual values and actually use them we're not actually building a subsequence in the output like from the first array we're going to take these three elements and add them together so one plus three plus two in subsequences we know that the relative order of the elements does matter but when you add elements does the order really matter if i add the two before the three does it matter no it doesn't so just forget the word subsequence because that's usually the word we use when we want to solve like a dynamic programming problem but in this case the order doesn't matter and second the elements we take from the second array we want to take the minimum among all of those. So at first, this is kind of another misleading hint that this might be dynamic programming because it's a common pattern to want to maximize the total output, which in this case is the total score, but also minimize something else. But in this case, when you actually very carefully read the problem, this is the equation that we want. We want to add the numbers from the first array. So one plus three plus two. So this is from nums one. And then from the second array, we want to take the minimum among all of those elements, two, one, four. But we're not actually trying to minimize anything. Yes, we have to take the minimum from all of these, but we want to then multiply this by this, and we want to maximize this entire thing. Now, how do you maximize it? Well, you probably want to maximize each of the numbers in the first array, and you probably also want to maximize all of the numbers in the second array. So we don't have conflicting priorities here. Really, we're trying to be greedy. We're trying to maximize everything. So that's a bit of a hint that this is not dynamic programming. We can solve this another way, a greedy way, but it's still not very simple or intuitive on how we can do that because there are going to be cases where we have conflicting priorities because there are going to be uh, cases where we have to make a choice. Let's consider a really simple example. Let's get rid of these two. What if we just had this array and let's say our K was actually one? Well, ideally, we just want to maximize everything in the first array and maximize everything in the second array. But clearly here we have a choice. We can only choose this or we can choose this. So in the first choice, we favor having a larger N2. In the second, we favor having a larger N1. Now, in this case, the result will be by choosing this, it'll, the result I think will be three. With this, it would have been two. But you can imagine how complicated making that decision would be in a very large array. How do we intelligently do that? And I'll say that basically, this is a hard problem to solve. Let's try to make the problem easier for us. Let's try to actually solve a simpler problem. Let's go back to the drawing board and try to consider some brute force approaches. Yes, the simplest brute force would be to sort of have a decision tree, but that would be exponential. And you'll find that trying to add memoization to that would be difficult because there aren't really super natural sub problems with the, this like array of numbers. It's hard to formulate that as a dynamic programming problem. The idea we can use is a little bit more simple. We know that in the second array, yes, we're going to take like a handful of elements, but there's only one of these elements that really really matters and that happens to be the minimum so why not try to formulate the problem in such a way where we consider every single element 
as the minimum and try to find what's the maximum score we could get if one happened to be the minimum. Well, there's only a single one and we do need three elements. I don't think we can have less than three elements when we calculate a score. So in this case, we have to kind of keep adding. Well, which one would you rather add? The two or the three? Well, it's kind of hard to say the way we're going through this right now because we're starting at the smallest. Why not try to be greedy like I mentioned earlier? Why not start at the biggest and say, what if four is the minimum in the second array? What's the maximum score we can get then? Well, there's only a single four, so that's not even possible. So naturally, the next question to ask would be, what's the maximum score we can get where three is the minimum? Why is that the natural question to ask? Because we already have a four, and if we add a three, we've updated our minimum to now be three. Now, finding those elements in order is not going to be easy unless we actually sort the arrays, but we know we kind of have to keep that one-to-one -one mapping for elements from the first array to the second array. So what we do is create an array of pairs, but then sort the array in descending order based on the values from the second array. So when I take this and sort it, the output would look like this. So getting rid of these first two and the output is now going to, well, the input is going to look like this. So an array of pairs. Now I did draw it as two arrays, but we're going to have a single array. But now going back to that idea of for every single element in the second array, let's figure out what is the maximum possible score we could have where this is the minimum from the second array. We already know that it's not possible to do that for this. We just don't have enough elements with this as the value from the second array. So then we kind of expand. We have two elements now and we're asking a new question. What's the max score where this is the minimum? Again, we don't have enough elements here. So then we keep going in this order now. Now we ask the question, what's the max score where two is the minimum? And now we finally have reached that threshold of K elements. So we can finally actually calculate a score. How are we going to do it? Well, we don't even have to keep track of the minimum because every time we add a new element, that is going to be the minimum from the second array. So it's not like we have to take the minimum of all these K elements. That's kind of the neat part here. So our minimum is two from the second array. And as we go in the first array, we probably should keep a running total, a running sum of each element. That should be easy enough though. So here we would have accumulated two plus three plus one multiplied by two. That's gonna give us a score of 12. Now that does happen to be the result in this case, but that was too easy. This is a pretty simple example. So let's kind of continue how we would continue to solve this problem if we had a much longer array. And we haven't yet asked the question, what's the max score we could get where one is the minimum? Now, the problem here, of course, is that we have more than K elements. And I think this is probably the hardest part of the problem, at least in terms of the intuition, because now we have the difficult problem of making a choice. How do we make that choice? How do we know which one of these elements to remove? And I'll tell you the answer is simpler than you might think. We know that the calculation we're trying to make is taking the sum from the first array and the minimum from the second array. So my question is, we know one is the minimum from the second array. So does the calculation change whether we remove two or remove three or remove four? What I'm asking is, does the calculation of the second portion change where we take the minimum from the second array? Not really, it's still going to be one. We're still gonna be multiplying one by the sum from the first array. So really it doesn't matter which one of these we choose. So we shouldn't use use the value from the second array to make our decision. It's irrelevant. It's not going to affect the score. What is going to affect the score is which one of the elements we remove from nums one, because those are the ones we're summing up. That's the main idea behind this problem. It's not simple to come up with, but now that you see it, I hope you understand it. So now here, when we are making the choice, which one do you think we should remove? probably the one because it's the smallest among all of these. If we are going to be removing based on the smallest from a set of values, and we always want our set of values to be at most K, a natural data structure to use would be a min heap. And that's what I'm gonna be doing in this problem. Now, before we code it up, what would be the time complexity of this approach? Well, remember we are sorting the input array. Let's say it's of size N, that would make the time complexity of sorting N log N, and that's going to dominate the time complexity. Yes, we're gonna be pushing and popping from 
from the heap, but each operation is going to be log k because the max size of the heap is going to be k and n operations is going to be n log n. So obviously in this case, n log n is going to be larger than n log k. And in terms of space complexity, I believe it's going to be big O of K if you don't count extra memory needed from sorting, depending on how that sorting is implemented. Now let's code this up. So like I said, the first thing we actually want to do is sort the array of pairs. We want to first build that array of pairs. Thankfully, this is pretty easy in Python. This is called list comprehension. So we're going to go through every pair of elements. And before we do that, we can actually zip the two arrays, nums1 and nums2, unpack those variables. And then for the array, we want to add a pair. I'm going to do it like this. This is actually a tuple. I guess in this case, it probably doesn't matter. You could also use like a sub list or just a tuple like I'm doing here. Then we want to sort this. So we want to do a slightly custom sorting algorithm. We want to pass in our pairs and we want to sort it based on the second value in the pairs. So we can use a lambda function. We have to specify the variable with key for sorted. That's just how this sorted method works. If you want to sort it based on some key, you have to specify that. I forgot what this is called, maybe a name parameter or something like that. But we can pass in an inline function, aka a lambda function, which will take a single parameter, which I'm going to call p for pair, and it will sort it based on the second value in that pair. So at index one, and we also would probably want to sort this in descending order. So we're sorting this in descending order based on nums two and then we can reassign pairs to that because I don't think this actually updates pairs. So we do have to have that line. Now to build the min heap, well, initialize the min heap, it's gonna be empty. And I'm gonna keep track of two variables just to make things a little bit easy. Well, one, we I think we definitely have to keep track of the sum, the n1 sum. And I'm also gonna keep track of the n2 minimum like this. So n1 sum is initially gonna be zero. The minimum we can probably just set to float of infinity because we're trying to minimize it. Or if you don't remember how to set it to float of infinity, a good another valid value would probably be to just take the max from nums two, but I'm going to set it to infinity. And for now, we're going to initialize our result, aka the max score to zero as well. But then we're just going to start going through every pair in our list of pairs. So n1, n2, we're going to unpack these from each pair. And first thing we want to do is just update our current n1 sum using n1. And while we're at it, might as well update our n2 minimum to be n2 min or n2. But I believe since we are going through this in descending order based on n2, we really don't even need to do that. And that also tells me we probably don't even need to keep track of n2 min. n2 is literally always going to be the minimum that we've seen up until this point. So I'm just now going to clean that up. So I think this is perfectly fine to do in a real coding interview. You don't have to like know exactly what you're going to do before you do it. I think it's okay to refactor on the fly. But now we know with every pair, the whole point of it is to add it to the heap queue to make sure, first of all, that we didn't go over. So first, let's update our min heap and push just n1. Remember, that's all we need to pass in. We don't even care about n2 because when we're deciding which element to remove from the heap, we only take n1 into account. So now the first thing we want to check before we try to update our score is have we gone over the length? Has the length of this heap exceeded k if it has? we should probably pop from that heap. And we can do that like this. So this is the N1 that we popped. So I'm gonna name it slightly differently, N1 pop. And this is also the value that we want to remove from our N1 sum. So we're gonna decrement our sum by the N1 pop value. Of course, I could have just moved this variable up here, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being a little bit more explicit. Now we can be sure that our heap is of valid length, but it's possible actually the heap could be less than K. The length could be less than K. So also add an if statement to check that it's exactly equal to K. And if it is, now we can start updating our result and we know we're trying to maximize it. So we're going to take the max of the current result as well as remember the formula is N1 sum multiplied by the minimum from N2, which we know is going to be whatever we happen to push right now anyway. And I believe that is the entire code. So now we can just go ahead and return the result out here to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.